New York Yankees fans, how's it going yet again? It is Felix from NYNews.com. Like always, hola como estas? Those hats coming soon. So the majority of Yankees fans have been angry with the Yankees front office because it hasn't been, let's say, it's been over 10 years, but we still remember the boss, how he went out there and got really any player that Yankees fans wanted. We were spoiled. But obviously now there's a new sheriff in town. So one thing that I always gave credit to this new regime is how they get players that nobody ever heard of and then when they're Yankees they just take off. I've always stated that the Yankees are excellent when it comes to drafting international players and trading or picking up players that other teams have given up on. Or maybe they never had a shot. So with that being said, Let's take a time machine back to 2014 when Derek Jeter retired. The Yankees could have easily signed the player via free agency to replace Jeter. But the Yankees' mindset was set. They decided to trade for Didi Gregorius, a player who was flying under the radar. And fast forward now, Didi Gregorius has been a major part in the Yankees' success in the clubhouse and on the field. In my opinion, Brian Cashman likes the approach that he's taking. I think he likes the challenge. Obviously, the Yankees are worth billions of dollars, but I think he likes the challenge of building a team where it doesn't require that the Yankees spend, literally go over the cap and spend millions of dollars. I think Brian Cashman and the Yankees front office has made it, let's say, where a goal is set where the Yankees do not have the highest payroll if and when they win the World Series. Obviously, we have seen that. The 2019 Yankees are a perfect example of this approach of, I hate to say this, of being cheap. It's not in a bad way. It's cheap in a smart way. Let's take a look at the Yankees' current roster. Let's start off with the obvious. Let's start off with Luke Voigt. He didn't get a chance in St. Louis. When the Yankees traded for him, everybody was saying, who's Luke Voigt? Who's this truck driver? And boom, he became a success in New York. Now, let's talk about the most recent success, Mike Talkman, who was really just playing in the minor leagues, being wasted. Any Major League Baseball team could have had Mike Talkman, but the Yankees, analytical staff, their scouts are premier. Let's even talk about Cameron Maven who had his ups and downs this past offseason. No team wanted to touch him, but the Yankees gave him a shot, and he's really coming through as a Yankee in the clubhouse and on the field. But let's talk about the main pickup, which I believe is the best because he's great defensively, your boy Giovanni Urshela. Gio. Scouts around the league defensively say that Gio is top three in all of Major League Baseball, behind Chapman and Arenado. Urshela has been so good for the Yankees that he's changing their future plans. He's basically, really, if you look at him, an everyday third baseman. Look, I love Miguel Andujar. If I were to pick between Gio and Andujar, I would pick Andujar. But it's going to be really tough for the Yankees if they don't make the World Series Having a chip like Miggy, you know, if the Yankees decide to go for starting pitching, it's really going to be a tough decision for the Yankees to make. Let's say if you have these two players playing at the same time, obviously Gio's going to be a bench player, but wow. I don't know, man. It's a tough decision. Other players that sort of fit this category include Hicks, Herman, Luizaga, Cortez, and even Tommy Canely. I'm sure I left a few names out, but wow, the Yankees are great at being cheap. New York Yankees fans, leave your opinions in the comment section below. What's your top three? Leave your opinions in the comment section below. And like always, this has been Felix from NYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe, and I will check you out next time. Before it hits the